rare and endangered species. Um, and so I, um, I was with Les's son up there and we laughed a lot, really, really. The New Zealanders are really nice people and I think have far more courage than we have. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. So what I'm going to do now is, because I'm a doctor, is walk you through the medical effects of the whole nuclear fuel cycle from uranium mining and all the way up to nuclear waste and talk about what Howard's hidden agenda is and how Rudd's going along with it and what I think is going on with the Aborigines at the moment in the Northern Territory that I think has nothing to do with child sexual abuse. Their disease is an enormous, I'm a paediatrician, I mean they have a fever and arthritis and all sorts of things. They're not talking about helping the, that situation. But really it's a land grab. And I think that what they're going to do is take away half the Northern Territory land on which lies a lot of uranium and where they want to store foreign radioactive waste. But I'll walk you through that in a minute. And there aren't many journalists who are sort of waking up to that. And it's time, although if you read Crikey, do any of you read Crikey? Crikey today, there were some good articles about that. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Uranium. We've got 40% of the world's richest uranium, and it's uh, on Aboriginal land, of course, like the uranium is in North America, on Navajo tribal land. Um, and when a uranium is mined, there are two basic elements, 235 and 238. And this is the one that fissions to make nuclear weapons and nuclear power. When it's mined, it's present in 0.7%, and it must be enriched to 3%, for use in nuclear power, or over 50% and you've got bomb grade material, and that's why they're worried about Iran, for any country that has a uranium enrichment plant can make fuel for nuclear power and they can make bombs, okay? The stuff that's left behind is called depleted uranium, it's depleted only of uranium-235. Uranium decays to a series of daughter products, one of which is radium, which Madame Curie isolated and uh, she stirred pitch blend and re removed the radium and she was so fascinated she used to walk around with a little pellet in her pocket playing with it. She died of leukemia because yep. radium is very carcinogenic, it's very high energy radioactive and the body thinks it's calcium so it's laid down in the bone and in a minute I'll talk to teach you how radiation causes cancer. Another one of them is radon which is a gas which is also highly carcinogenic. So if a miner breathes radon into his lung, and that's the right lung, goes down the air passages into the terminal air passages and just irradiates a tiny volume of cells for many years, such that 30 to 50 percent of men who've mined uranium in the past have died of lung cancer. Our uranium miners have never been followed up to see if they have a higher than normal incidence of cancer. Uh, but certainly in North America and in other countries, they have been followed up. Now, to mine uranium, you've got to dig up millions of tonnes of ore. And of course, how do you do that? You use fossil fuel for the big sort of lifts and, the, and the, they're not called steam shovels anymore, but the shovels and the trucks, they're enormous things. So at the beginning of the fuel cycle, a lot of carbon dioxide is produced. And carbon dioxide is responsible for 50% of global warming. The rest is methane and nitrous oxides and, and various other gases, but this is, this is the most common and that's why we've got to stop burning coal and if you go to Terrigal and look at all those ships just waiting to go up to Newcastle to be loaded up with coal to take to China. And we're almost beyond the point of no return for global warming now. And when carbon dioxide gets into the atmosphere, it stays there for 100 years. So the effects we're feeling now with these crazy storms and the terrible floods in England and the like um, have come from past CO2 that we have created. And we really are in acute emergency now. It's as if we've got a patient who's dying in the intensive care unit. And you have to stay up all night with that patient or that patient will die. You can't compromise. And that's what's happening to the planet, which is kind of a living organism in its own right. Um, I'd better just t tell you how radiation causes cancer. The body is composed of trillions of cells. In each cell is a nucleus. In the nucleus are chromosomes, and arranged on the chromosomes are the genes. In every cell of the body, there's a gene that controls the rate of cell division called the regulatory gene. And what happens is that 
if radiation hits that, and there are four sorts of radiation, that's good, I can see. You can see it up there. It's magic. <laughs> there are x rays, and I'm sure you've all had an x ray. You need to know that radiation is cumulative. You must never have an unnecessary x ray. Mammograms are a bit iffy. Um, I have them occasionally, but the breast is a very radiosensitive organ. Little girls who got a radiated in Hiroshima with no breast tissue when they grew up had a much higher than normal incidence of breast cancer because the little tiny cells that were going to form breasts got irradiated. Um, don't ever have dental x-rays every year. You don't need it. If you've got a sore tooth, you need an x-ray. In other words, be careful about it. If you've got pneumonia, you need an x-ray. The risk is minimal, the benefit is great, we can treat your pneumonia and you'll be cured. But be careful. Then there's gamma radiation, which is given off by radioactive material like the uranium and all the daughters, and it's like an x-ray. So when the men mine uranium, they're exposed to whole body doses, low doses, of gamma radiation consistently. And one of the organs that gets irradiated, apart from everything else, are the testicles pair of organs, the most precious organs in a male body from an evolutionary perspective because in the testicles of the sperm with the genes that produce all future generations and it's not good to irradiate sperm or eggs and I'll talk about that in a minute. So these are non-particulate, you know when the <coughs> technician says breathe in, hold it and runs out of the room and goes click, you get irradiated in that instant but you don't become radioactive, okay? Uh, one X-ray to the pregnant abdomen increase, doubles the incidence of leukemia in that baby. So, you know, this is carcinogenic material, cancer causing. Alpha uh, emissions come from stuff like radium and radon. You have the atom with the electron shooting around it, and an alpha particle is composed of two protons and two neutrons, and it's, it's solid. And if that, if that mass hits the gene, the gene becomes damaged the DNA gets damaged. Um, and the cell sits quietly any time from 5 to 60 years, which is the incubation time for cancer. Whereas if I sneeze on you, in two days you're sneezing. Incubation time for cold or a flu is two days. So that means when you meet someone who's sort of sneezing and coughing, you say, how long have you been sick? And if they say, oh, I got it yesterday, you run away from them. <laughs> you really do. If they've had it for three or four days, they're probably OK. Um, measles, mumps, chicken pox, swooping cough, three weeks. Cancer is five to 60 years. So you don't even know you've been irradiated, you don't know your genes been damaged, and one day you'll feel a lump in your breast, or you get a sore leg and you've got a bone cancer, or whatever. And the, the cancer doesn't wear a little flag saying, I was made by some strontium 19 who ate in a piece of fish 20 years ago. So it doesn't denote its origin. Um, beta radiation is like alpha in that it's particulate and it's just an electron shot up from an unstable nucleus. And all of them do the same thing. They mutate genes. Now let's go to the sperm and eggs. If I can find the duster. 